Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, wow. moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Oh wow! Check it out! Tops! Did somebody say oh wow? Hey yeah, we just found these tops. Say, one thing I never understood about tops, why do they only stay upright while spinning? Yeah, whenever I try to balance it on its tip, it just falls over, but not when it's spinning. Well that's because of physics. Before I start explaining this, the physics of top spinning gets surprisingly complicated, involving a strong understanding of classical mechanics and even calculus. So I'm going to simplify things a bit, with apologies to my more physics-focused fans out there. Before we can discuss why a spinning top won't fall over, let's first figure out why the non-spinning top does fall over. It falls over due to gravity, right? Correct. Now, to understand why a spinning top doesn't just tip over due to gravity like a non-spinning top, we need to go back to the first law of motion. So Isaac Newton's first law of motion states, an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion, unless acted upon by an outside force. Take this toy car, for example. When I push it, it will move in a straight line, and it won't stop moving unless an outside force slows it down, like friction, or stops it, like my hand. When you spin a top, it also wants to keep moving, in this case, around and around. This is known as angular momentum. The amount of angular momentum depends on the size of the top, both the mass and the area, and how fast it's spinning. It doesn't tip over because the outside forces aren't strong enough to just make it stop spinning. But friction does cause the spinning to slow down. As it spins slower, the angular momentum decreases, until gravity becomes greater than the angular momentum and pulls it over. So as long as the angular momentum is greater than the force of gravity, the top keeps spinning? Right! So a top will spin longer if we increase the angular momentum? Also correct! And we can do that by increasing the mass of the top, the size of the top, and or the speed of the top? By golly, I think they've got it! Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. We're gonna make drawing tops. For this, you'll need paper, markers or pencils, scissors, a compass or large cup, tape, and cardboard like cereal boxes. First, cut out four circles from the cardboard. I'd recommend about two inch radius if you're using a compass, or if you don't have a compass, trace the top of a large cup. Next, carefully push a pencil through the center of each circle. You can use a marker for your top, but I'd recommend a sharpened pencil to make the initial hole. Remember to keep it as centered as possible, as balance is still very important for tops. Also, don't poke yourself with the pencil. Once you have all three circles in place, use a little tape to hold them together and to hold them to the marker. Now is when the real engineering begins. Give it a test spin. Then try adjusting different parts of your top. What if you move the circles higher or lower on the pencil? What happens if you add in more circles or different size circles? Or what if you add on weight to your circles by taping on some pennies? The possibilities are pretty endless depending upon how you adjust the mass of the disc, the size of the disc, and the location of the disc. The one thing to keep in mind is to keep the whole thing balanced. That's important for tops. You know, I'd say this is probably one of my top favorite experiments. Were you? Huh? Get it, top? To what? What? This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.